Twitter stuff. Probably should mute my Twitch page. And of course, I need to make sure that I actually walk on screen. Kind of important. <laughs> All right, I think we're good. So, hello everyone, this is Chris Ingerson, and it is, I was going to say 7 p.m., but that's not what I usually say. It is August uh, 22nd, and this is the August 22nd. I made it five words in, at least. <laughs> this is the August 22nd Text Quest dev stream. Sorry, 22nd Text Quest is hard to say for some reason. In any case, uh, today we're going to be expanding on the uh, Heroes Grove puzzle. And by expanding on that, I, I kind of actually mean we're going to be looking at our container system a little bit. Uh, I would like to change our... Uh, how the puzzle works currently to make it a little bit more complex, not by much, um, but something that requires a little bit of thinking um, beyond just lighting two torches. Um, so currently, we go ahead and play, which for some reason is not set to maximize on play, which is great. Uh, so currently, the only thing you have to do to solve the puzzle is you have to light these two torches that are here. Um, which, by the way, are still using the old model because I am currently in the process of modeling a new torch. Because I really, really don't like these models. But it's also quite difficult to uh, come up with a good one. In any case, so we take this and we do uh, cold and light lamp. We can light these two torches. So, light torch. Oh, light lamp. All right. And of course, uh, if we try to pick up the sword. I was going to say that it won't move. And then if we light the lamp. All right. Now we can actually take the sword. Uh, and then we can, oops, if I could spell sword, we can hold the sword now. Um, so that's, that's the current puzzle. You know, nothing really complex, nothing really um, particularly interesting about it. Current puzzle. You know, nothing I wanted to make sure that my audio on Twitch is all right. Um, well, nothing particularly bad about it, nothing particularly complex. Um, and what I would like to do is, instead of having these torches just be, as you can see, empty except for fire. Um, let me extinguish. So if we actually take a look at these... Oops, I can't jump up on top of it. I really wish I could. Um... You can see that there's nothing in there, which doesn't really make sense when you think about it. Why can you light a torch that has nothing to light? Um, so what I would like to do to this puzzle is actually have um, pieces of wood that you need to put in uh, one of the torches. So when you get here, uh, keep in mind that these torch models are not going to be the final one. These are just placeholder for now. Um, the left torch over here will have a... Uh, a log that is locked into it, um, by which I mean there's going to be metal bars over the top of it. That way you can't take the log from it. Uh, and that one, you'll be able to, to just light, because the log is in there. That's the kindling for the torch, so you don't have to do anything really for it. But the, the one on the right here is going to be empty, and the uh, iron bars that are going to be over the other, that the other torch has uh, will basically be warped open, or they'll be just broken off to the side. Um and there won't be any log inside, so there's nothing to burn. Uh, that means that you're going to have to bring some type of burnable thing and place it in here. Now, the solution for that will probably be one of two or three possible things you can burn. Maybe, depending on how much I feel like allowing you to burn different things. Um, but there's definitely one... Uh, the solution that I'm definitely thinking of right now is... Uh, the fireplace in the cabin will have a, a log in it, and that's how the uh, fire in the cabin is going to run. Uh, but you can extinguish that and take that log and bring it here and then put it right in here and uh, light it. So that would be this puzzle. Or that, that, would, that would be what I would like to do to expand this puzzle. Um, basically require an item from a different stage that's earlier on. Um, and hopefully won't be too bad. I do think that that is a kind of... I know, as, as sad as it might sound, that's kind of stretching the limit on difficulty for a normal mode puzzle, at least midway through the game. Uh, mostly because it's not entirely intuitive. It's not, I don't, I don't think it's really that bad, but it is something that is 
questionable in terms of uh, what you could expect players to be able to think through on their own. Um, and that's largely just because um, complex interactions can sometimes be very taxing when it comes to puzzles. So uh, that's what I would like to do today, is essentially get it so that we can't light these until we have kindling in them, uh, or rather a specific item of some kind, and then you'll be able to light it. Uh, so that means that the torches are not going to be just torches, they have to act like containers. And to get that to work, that means that I actually have to change how my containers work currently. Um, so the way containers work currently is there is an actual class. Let me go ahead and stop playing. So there is an actual class called container. Um, and that container class has a bunch of information for things like max capacity, um, can, can specific items be placed in this container, do we want to list the contents when you examine it? Do we is the content or is the uh, container always open? Is it locked? Does it need a key? All this fun stuff similar to doors, basically, for open and close ID and all that stuff. Um, and then a data ID that tells you know the session uh, what what to look for when we're saying uh, is this is this chest open or closed or container closed or open. Um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff in here, and the problem is I actually need to break this class into an interface. And this is something that I always kind of knew I would have to do, um, but I, I put it off for as long as possible because I really didn't want to. Um, and the reason that we have to break it out into an interface instead of having it be a class is because, well, um, container is a is a class right now. It's it's You can only derive from one class in C-sharp, so that means that you can't have something that's a torch and a container, unless it was already a container when it becomes a torch, um, which means that I would have to make a new class derived from container that is a torch, essentially. So I'd be duplicating code all over the place. Um, and I don't really want to do that. So instead, um, I'm going to create an interface, probably something called iContainer. Um, and that interface will determine how interactions with containers will, will work. So instead of looking for the container class itself, um, I'm actually going to look for the iContainer component. So we're going to go ahead and get started doing that. So I'm going to create C Sharp script. I'm going to say iContainer or COtainer, if I could spell iContainer. Okay. So this is going to be an inter yeah, an interface. Can't talk tonight. Um, and it's not going to do anything particularly complex, although it's probably going to have similar things to our base container class. Um, so let's go ahead and change this. So interface, get rid of the mono behavior, make sure that this is in text quest namespace. All right. And then we're going to say, mm, what do I need in here? Probably max capacity, specific items, <sighs> list contents maybe. Yeah, it's hard to see. It's hard to say how much of this I'm really going to need to know. Um, I don't think I'm going to need a mm, locked needs key or no key message. Um, I will need incorrect item message. I don't think I'll need open and close IDs, um, and I don't think I'll need data IDs. So I'm taking like half of the stuff from the current container class and and uh, peeling that out into a uh, into an uh, interface, basically. I'm going to grab this. Uh, we want list contents. Yes, I suppose that's probably something we want. Let's go ahead and take that. Put that in here. Uh, let's see. Always open. Do not, do not need that. Uh, da, 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 da. Incorrect item message. We're going to need that. And this is just going to be all red squiggles for a little bit um, until I can put, pull everything over here. Uh, don't need anything else. Um, Initial items, maybe? Uh, let me see where I, this might be something that's actually populated at runtime. So if that's the case, let's see here. Description, initial item dot count. Do not care about this. And from JSON. Okay, so I don't think I need, nope, I lied. I do. Bah, okay. So yes, I do need this. Let's go ahead and paste that in. But that's the last thing I believe we need from uh, the current class. So we're going to get rid of this stuff. I'm going to get rid of you. And don't want you. And there we go. All 
All right, so we're going to say using system. Oops, if I can spell system. System dot collections dot generic because we have some lists here. Um, that's pretty much all we care about, and the rest we're going to have to make getters, which is wonderful because I this is my only real criti criticism of um, so we do get set. I guess we'll just make gets instead of get sets. Uh, this is my only real criticism of interfaces. I really don't like how you have to do these. Why do you? Oh right. It's like partial declarations and then derived classes actually have to do a lot more to make it all work but yeah it's just the way interfaces work uh all right so we don't need public on any of these ah sorry got the hiccups ah okay so we're gonna say specific items uh this will be a getter as well wow that is the most awkward spacing i think i've ever seen uh list contents Get her freaking autocorrect. Ah. All right. Uh, do capital L because I like to use my getters with capitals. Final message. Do, 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 do. Get semicolon. Get semicolon. And capital I. All right. So I suppose I should probably comment these so that I know what they are. by this container. Um, now, you might, ah, you might be wondering why I'm using uh, XML comments for these instead of the Unity tooltip stuff. Uh, that is actually because interfaces can't really be serialized, so I'll only ever see these things in code. Um, although, actually, this is... Well, it's not pointless, I guess. Classes will override these. Well, not override, even. Um, classes will have their own declarations of these, um, but they have to use all of these. And um, essentially, we'll be able to... Well, yeah, there's no real convenient way to do this. Basically, I'm just doing this so that when I look at this stuff in code, because I'm going to be looking at the generic I container probably, um, I'll be able to see what my tool tips are for these. All right, so specific items will be... Uh, I guess I can actually just copy these things over. Yeah, so only these items can be placed in the container. Mm -hmm. List contents should the container's contents be listed when examining the container. Uh, incorrect item message to display when attempting to insert an unsupported item. And then initial items are items in the, uh, how do I phrase this? Items in the container by Alt, I guess. That's what I would say. Okay. So that's a pretty good base class. We're going to come back over here to the container. We're going to make it derive from I container. Okay. So that's going to cause some amount of problems, but that will be fine for a second. So we're going to say public int max capacity. Get return max capacity. Yep. We have to do all the fun things. So public list item IDs, uh, specific items, get return specific items. Get rid of that. Mm -hmm. List contents, incorrect item message, and Public bool list contents get return list contents public string incorrect item message get return incorrect item 
message. And finally, public list. Oops, not that. List item ID initial items. Get return initial items. All right. So that should be the correct item message. Did I spell? Oh, <laughs> that's funny. I never noticed that. I spelled incorrect item message wrong. I spelled it massage. Okay, well, let's rename that. Sorry, doing some stream stuff on the left here. All right, so are you still mad at me? Nope, all right, good. So we are going to have to change some of this stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and find all references. Inspector, set local container. Oh geez, I forgot about that container stuff. Eey. Uh, let's see. Container interaction. Inventory. Here we are. Item. Um, should I make that a I container? Maybe. Um, I'm actually going to also take some functions from the container class. Specifically, if I remember correctly, there should be function to add, here we are, insert and remove item. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, I do not recall what, hmm. so I think, ah, there we are. So uh, add item is used for pretty much uh, adding an item to the chest with, or to the container without flagging anything, basically. So it's, it's not gonna do like an output saying, you added this to the container or anything like that. Um, but I am gonna need these functions. Um, they're gonna be pointless for now, obviously. But, And finally, you. All right. So we got the three functions that we need in there. Um, container should still be all right. We shouldn't have any squiggles because we just took it from them. All right. And these items or these functions are necessary for. Uh, basic functionality because again we're moving away from having an actual container class that we're looking for and moving towards having the interface i container that we look for um, which is great because that complicates a lot of our interactions with containers but at the same time it lets us do a lot more flexible things uh, because we're no longer locked to having things derived from the container class they just need to implement i container so all right this is going to References, container objects, and all references. <laughs> really? <sighs> all right. I container. Let's see. I container. That'll still work for all of our container logic, so we don't really need to change anything. Uh, ah, here we are. I believe I can do that. We'll see if this will work. I'm hopeful that it will. Um, Ah, come on. Seriously? 
Um, Oi, so I suppose I'm going to have to genericize a lot of stuff. Okay. Um, so currently it looks like our item logic is checking to see if the container is open, um, which makes sense if, you know, you're thinking of a container in the sense of like a chest, or a chest, which has a lid and then the container itself. Um, but that doesn't really make sense for things that are containers, like torches that are just open, that you can just put stuff on top of. So is open is a pretty poor choice of words there. Instead, I probably should have um, a bool. I don't want to say is open. Um, can place, can insert objects. How about can insert items? Can items be inserted into container by the player? Okay. Uh, so we're going to come back over here. And this will now break some stuff for container. All right. Let's see. There is a... say public pool that's my phrasing can insert items Blah. get return uh, I think we're gonna want to say uh, is open for here I suppose so very basic getter now uh, we're gonna come back here and we're gonna say can insert items oh, you've got to be kidding um, ah, uh, does that, I actually wonder if I can even do that. Okay. So we're going to try this string name, get, will that work? I think it will. Ha! That's kind of interesting. Um, so this is a weird thing. I've never actually tried this before. Um, so we need to be able to get the name of the container, uh, which means that our interface has to have this name field, but this name field is actually based off of interactive objects name field, which is just a string getter for the name. Um, but it looks like a class that derives, that implements a interface that requires a field will be valid if that field is already part of a base class. So that's good to know, actually. I didn't, I didn't know if that would work or not. I've never done uh, sort of a weird backwards nesting like that. So, okay, so that will work. That makes me happy. Let's come down here. Right, and this is where we gotta do the same thing. So I container, as a container. We're going to change this to uh, can insert items. Ah, crud. Okay. Contents.count dot max capacity. That one would be easy to fix. Um, so I guess contents I'm going to have to pull over as well. God, I just got so much crap that I have to do. Go ahead and take this, and do this, get, oh, it's public, I was going to say, why are you squiggling me? Uh, da, 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 the current contents of the container. Okay. And I think we're good here. I think we're good here. Um, all right, let's let it compile. I'm pretty sure that there's going to be some errors somewhere here. I would be surprised if there weren't. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
All right, let me clear that out. Uh, and just to double check that everything's still working, um, I'm going to jump over to the uh, castle real quick. There, intro, castle. Because the castle currently has a functioning, well, what should be a functioning um, container. So we're going to see if we can actually inter or interact with it as expected. Because the changes we made are fairly minimal. Uh, let's go ahead, go to spawn points. Where are you? Good. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my test spawn real quick. <laughs> so I'm just going to try to drop this note uh, inside the chest. Okay, so open, insert, note, examine, okay, it's not great, um, <laughs> I wonder what I should do about that actually. I didn't think about having the indentation be affected like that. Oh well, um, so it looks like it works. Looks like everything is fine. Um, so we can just do take all. I now have an amethyst and an invoice in my container, or in my inventory. If I examine the container, see the chest is empty. All right, so that all seems to work, which is great. So now let's look at container. I'm going to find all references. Um, actually, let me check where this is being used. Contains key. I might actually need this then. So I'm going to copy this. And we're going to have, paste that in, get, capital D, and this is going to be data ID used to identify, not ident, identify this container. Back here, and we're gonna have to add that. Uh, let's see, can insert items, public data ID. Um, let's just call it data ID, isn't it? Set get return data ID. Lowercase d. All right. So let's look for this again. Find all references. Hmm. Session is doing a lot. I think we're going to want to change this. Content IDs. Which I'm pretty sure I'm not using. Nope. Of course not. So let's go ahead and do that. List. Item ID. Content IDs. And these are going to be the current or no, not the item IDs for the current contents of the container. All right, come back here to container, make sure everything's correct. Good, no squiggles. So, all right, let's go to find all references. There we go. All right. Man, this is super great, isn't it? So I think I'm just going to change this to iContainer. Data ID. Data ID. Mm. All right. And I think that's all I have to do for that. 
Um, don't really care about get container contents. That doesn't really require an eye container specifically. So go back to container and let's see. Find all references. All contents ID. I suppose that's fine. Anything that's inside the container class, I don't really care about. So, all right. Uh, finally, let's go to find all references. Load container animation state. I'm not entirely sure that I need this anymore. Let's find all references. It's got zero references. I'll look for load container animation state. I'm pretty sure that this has been uh, basically ignored in favor of uh, scriptable object behaviors. Or, well, no, not scriptable object behaviors. Uh, scriptable or animation state scripting. That's what it is. Uh, but just in case, I suppose I can do find references and scene. Oh, interesting. I lied. It looks like something is using this. That, mm -hmm. That's weird. Really? Huh. Um, oh, there it is. State machine behavior. Ah, okay. So this is this is a state machine behavior then. Okay. Uh, so yes, I probably do actually want this. That is fine. Okay. So we'll get rid of that then. Let's find all references. So I guess, well, hmm. I lied. So I think I'm going to need this. Okay, so we can actually make this a little bit more. Oh. Uh, that's fine, I think. So this load container animation state will actually be referring to the container class, not the iContainer interface, um, because it's not. Container interaction. This is interesting. Very, really interesting. Where type empty value input container equals. Where are you? Are you in a test script? That's interesting. A safe standard safe. Oh, wait. This is a. Uh... No? Hmm. I do not know where this is being used either. Container interactions. This is one of the things that I'm really bad at. I fairly habitually find all references and scenes. Okay, good. Nothing. Uh, select dependencies. Okay, good. Nothing. Um, oh, you know what it is? Ah, uh, yes. That is actually an old one. Okay. So I am... 95% sure that I can get rid of this. I will read through it just in case. Uh, so this is actually one of the early forms of save state that I had. Um, it was not super great at all. It was it was a very, very jury-rigged way of doing things. Um, okay, container infos. Target interacted, awake. Okay, so I don't think we need this anymore. Let's go ahead and... All right, I'm going to reload all that. I'm going to find all references for container again. All right, here we are. Um, right. Okay, so I need to say is my container. We're going to do a lot of is I container stuff, aren't we? Okay. Mm -hmm. Is I container. Is 
Sorry, container. And oh my goodness, someone has their bass turned up really loud. Hopefully you guys can't hear that. But I definitely can. Which is impressive when you consider that I don't know who around here would have that. Well, either way. My container, my container. Let's see here. Do I need anything else? Here. Interaction, huh? Can... Yes, that will work. Okay, hold on. Mm -hmm. So we're going through currently and just replacing basically all references with, uh, with container, or to container with this stuff. Uh, so, open from interaction. Ah! Crud. Okay. Uh, that's not too bad. Um, I know what to do here. So we're gonna say... <laughs> interactive... Object. And this is gonna be... Do I wanna say root object? Or maybe interaction. How about base interaction? That's not bad. Base interaction is going to be get. Okay. And all this is going to do is it's basically just going to return this um, in most classes, but this way we can actually uh, pass things like base interaction. We can do stuff there. Not really the only place that I had a squiggle. I guess so. All right, so we're gonna come over here. <laughs> Add some more stuff here. Hey, too much crap. And we're gonna say public interactive object base interaction get return this. All right. So that should work. Let's go ahead and compile everything. Oh good, menus control. Ready to file, advanced save, Windows. Okay. Oh, we have some errors. Oh, that's fine. So base interaction. There we go. I was gonna say I thought I had two of those. Oh, it's still compiling. I was gonna say, why are you? Hmm. Ah. All right. So, <laughs> I think that's pretty much all we have to do. Um. Yeah, that's actually really not too bad. I was expecting that to be a lot worse. Okay, let's turn off our test spawn. Come through here. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go back to the Grove. We're going to start work on a, I guess for lack of a better word, container torch. Oh, wait. I thought these were... Okay. Right. These are... Right, right, right. Never mind. Uh, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and create a folder for torches. So torches. I guess we'll pull torch object in for now. Um, although after we do that, I'm going to see what's even using torch object, because it's it's clear to me that it's a little old, and I don't need two different ones. So I'm willing to bet it's just the original prefab for the torch. Let that go. <laughs> All 
All right, so let's go ahead and say find references and see. Really? I find that very hard to believe. As in, I don't believe you. Yeah, that seems more appropriate, but not this. Okay, fine. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say select dependencies. Okay, one more thing. We're just going to see if anything's referencing this in code. Oh, <laughs> ah, it's the Heroes Grove Manager. That's the old. That's the old version of the Grove. Um, yep. Then in that case, it is it is old, and it is not needed anymore. So I'm going to delete it, which is fine with me. So let's go ahead. Uh, come back here. Go to Heroes. Manager. Make sure that nothing's using this. Good. And yep, all pretty basic stuff. Not doing anything really particularly special. Pretty much doing the same thing we were doing before. All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and we're going to delete that. And then we're going to delete the torch object. Once Unity is uncompiling, of course. Also trying to think of what I'm going to name the script that's going to derive from torch and container. Do you want to call it container torch or torch container? Probably container torch. So, torch is going to be your standard, can light and extinguish, and it'll have lights and all that. Uh, whereas, container torch is a torch that is also a container and requires kindling. Eh. Um, maybe I should just... No, it wouldn't make sense for torch to derive from it. Because most torches in the game aren't going to be things that you light, really. So, um, all right. Let's go ahead and say create container torch. Container torch. Can I can I really not think of a better name? Uh. No, I really can't. So I guess we're just gonna call it a container torch. Alright. Let's go ahead and open this up. Reload all. Alright. Just gonna make sure that it's in the text quest namespace. It's gonna derive from torch and it's also going to derive from I container. I can cheat and just do use a control dot. There we go. Uh, that's not too bad. I mean, it's kind of pretty terrible, but uh, mostly because I have to do a lot of duplicate field scripting, which I'm not a huge fan of. Um, see, this is actually kind of the things that I'm particularly you don't really like is that I'm pretty much going to have to duplicate some code no matter what I do. Um, <sighs> okay. So at least I'm not really doing anything with these events, which may or may not be good. I don't know. Um, so let's go ahead and copy these and we'll just paste them in here. Oop. 
Well, whatever. I didn't need to move. That's fine. Uh, locked needs key. No key message. Incorrect item message. Let's open this up. Uh, data ID. And is that it? Oh, no. Initial items. Okay. Return this. Eh, that's probably fine. Uh, can insert items, I guess is going to be... Uh, get return return. Contents count is less than max capacity. So if our max capacity is three, um, then yeah, as long as you don't have three items in there, it should be fine. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to have to get her on the same line. I like to do content IDs are pretty much I'm actually gonna just steal that from this oh, which does mean oh the trader was already implementing it that's kind of nice uh, do this uh, da, 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 da. okay we're gonna need a lot of similar stuff ah man I set out to avoid doing duplicate code but it's kind of turning out that way anyway. Not the biggest fan of that. Especially because of all this. Like I'm just <sighs> straight up duplicating a bunch of code. Is there any way I could really simplify this? <sighs> Not really. Description, interactions. No, can't really do much here. Oh, jeez. Ah, <laughs> oh no. Ah. So this 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 getter needs to be well. It doesn't have to be in the interface, but it does need to be in everything that derives from I container. Hey. Of course it does. Okay, let's get rid of you. Uh, let's see if... I guess I don't really care about that. Um, it's not so much if it's open, it's just... Yeah, okay, so... Contents dot count is greater than zero. I think that's all I really care about there. Uh, then we're going to add all that stuff. Otherwise, eh, it's probably fine. Um, actually, you know what? I bet I can just do this. Honestly, I don't even need the if check there. Um, let's see. Do I want to have for each loop here. Da, 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 da. Probably fine. I'm not crazy about it. All right. Uh, da, 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 get rid of you. Get rid of you. All right. See specific items. What do we do over here? Oh, I think that's just actually get return specific items. Oi. If I could spell tonight. City. Mm -hmm. Turn list contents with a lowercase dot L. Mm -hmm. uh, ah, ah, I bit my 
tongue. Ah. And I can't spell. Or type, I guess. Turn initial items. Oi. Okay. Turn correct item message. I am not super stoked about having to do all this extra scripting. But I guess it's necessary. Um, actually, you know what? Let me, let me double check that. I don't think I'm doing anything with this right now. Uh, huh. Let's see. Incorrect item message. Find all references. Oh, good. It is. <laughs> it's used inside the container class. Oy. Okay. Well. I suppose that's fine. All right. Um. <laughs> on with our update for container torch uh, get return data ID for lowercase d mm -hmm. Let's see contents that's going to be something that has to be oh nope I can't do that actually boy oh boy These contents. Okay, so it looks like we're finally up to contents. So contents is a really weird getter. Are you serious? Uh, because the way contents work is it doesn't have all of the information at, uh, that it needs right away. Instead, it has to be accessed at runtime for it to be accurate. Um, and that's to prevent it from spawning in a bunch of items while I'm in edit mode. Um, excuse me. So, jeez, I guess I've got all of these freaking things. So much for not duplicating code. I'm just basically porting around container with me wherever I go. Ugh. Let's see, so we're going to just copy this whole block. Okay. Let me say using sleepyl.common using system dot collections dot generic. Okay. I think that's pretty much everything. So Oh, and you know what I probably want is I probably want to just copy the three functions that I stole from this. Because, hey, why not? Item not verb success. Encouraging listener delay. That's interesting. I don't recall what these do. Confirmation. Hmm. Why would I have a delay there? Oh, right. It's probably because the function is going to fire, or the uh, verb success is going to fire before on content item success fires. So. Huh. Why would remove from inventory work? Oh, right, because it's kind of weird like that. <sighs> okay, so I'm going to be duplicating this function as well. God, just all of the... All the things that I have to do here. Do you think that there has to be a better way? I don't like... So I've, I've pulled over... Almost 200 lines of code 
just to get everything functional. This isn't even any new code. It's all it's all duplicate code that exists in the container class, but is necessary for containers to function. <sighs> there has to be a better way than this. Uh, but the problem is that all of this is kind of needed. It's not particularly great that um, the container class has all of these complex interactions, but it's it's kind of necessary. Uh, if I don't have a lot of these methods in place, it's basically just going to break containers because there's a, a specific way that they they have to be set up. So I'm not entirely sure if I can get around it, honestly. Uh, let's see here. Insert item, doing all that fun stuff. Start coroutine. So I have to have a coroutine just so I can have a delay on the items. Really? That is not great. In fact, it's not it's not only not great, it is kind of unacceptable. So let's let's see if we can refine that a little bit, come up with a better way of doing it. comments. All right. Hello, Anthony. Welcome back. How are you today? So, insert item. It's going to call a listener delay, but we don't need that per se. Um, Um, let me look at this. Find all references. Insert item. Insert item. Insert item. That's really weird. Uh, remove from inventory. Container contents not count. It's listing container pump max capacity. Um, we need to do that. But what is this? Verb dot items dot count is equal to zero. Has cash inventory dot remove for any from inventory. Is this a for loop? Has to be, right? Yeah, assuming we don't get a break out of that. Interesting. Since dot direction does not e is equal to null. Okay. So I think this chunk of code here is basically looping through um, the amount of items that you're trying to place into the container. But it looks like at the end here, looks like we, we're going to continue on, which is going to mean that it's going to. Hmm. The problem with that is that it means it's eventually going to get to here, output result, which is not what we want, really. <laughs> so I think this is the only line that's really possibly going to be a problem. Um, and it might, might not really be that much of a problem. Container dot insert item cache inventory dot remove from inventory. Uh, <laughs> okay. Verb dot output. This this has to have been something that I have not tested, because one, it's dealing with multiple items which are technically a thing but they're not really implemented anywhere right now. Um, but the main reason is just looking at the code, it looks like it would output things twice, um, which is actually not, which is indicative that I didn't, I, I haven't tested this code basically. Like it's written up and it's probably just written up in case I need it. Um, but I don't think it's actually being used for anything right now. So that's not great. But that probably means that I don't need this whole 
listener delay. So I'm going to, well, okay, so first off, I'm going to just go ahead and, well, make all references here. So instead of saying that, I am just going to go ahead and say uh, item dot verb success plus equals uh, on I honestly don't even know. Hold on. What was it doing? Here it is. On content item success. On content item success. All right. Item success. Oops. So we're going to try that out real quick. So we're going to go back to the castle real quick and try that. Um, so if, if I'm incorrect and it doesn't assign the event listeners in a way that's predictable, um, what should happen is when I try to drop the note in the chest, it will instead... It'll drop it in the chest, but then it'll immediately pick it back up. So, oh, really? What are you mad about? Oh, right, that. <laughs> Duh. Okay. There we go. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, this is going to be a kind of esoteric day, I think. Mostly because it's doing something that I, I've known I'm going to need to do, or I, I knew I was going to need to do for a long time, and I just avoided it. Because I shirked responsibility. Take. We're gonna open. And we're going to open. Insert note. Salmon. Okay. Um... Seems like that's fine then. So we're gonna do just take note. All right. So yep, that works. Which means that I can just do that. Uh, simple as that. Uh, okay, container. And I guess that's what I'm gonna have to live with for now. Okay, so this is going to be, oh man, frustrating, because basically I also have to override the from JSON function for Torch to get the iContainer stuff. Man, it's a lot of annoying things. Um, let's go ahead and let that compile. Off. Save the scene real quick. <laughs> Come on. I believe in you. You can do it. All right, we're going to go to our grove. And let's take a look at this torch. Uh. <laughs> So this is going to be a container torch, which will, I guess, have its own editors. I'm going to create a folder called editor. Really just start pulling these things into their own folders. File and Shazam, Torch Inspector. All right. So what do I want to do here? I suppose I have to make these private. Can I make these? Okay, which probably means that these need to be protected as well. Okay, back to 
file. So I'm going to have to make a script that derives from Torch Inspector. Um, that's going to be the container torch editor. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. Create C sharp script container torch editor. Go ahead and open this up. Reload all. <laughs> Hello, the Jelmega. Welcome back. So let's see, we're going to make this text quest. For some reason, it's just first letters are never capitalized. How are you doing today, Jelmega? So this is going to derive from Torch Inspector. All right, now we have override on enable, then override on inspector GUI. All right, so we're going to say serialized object dot update realized object dot apply modified properties and then draw base oops okay draw buttons draw info that might be it all right and then draw torch inspector is that really what I called it that is apparently what I called it I rename that rename that to Raw torch info. Info. Aha. Okay. Uh, then we're gonna final or well, not quite end everything. We're gonna have draw verbs at the very bottom here, and then uh, we're gonna round it all out with private void draw container info. Mm -hmm. and we're gonna put that in front of. Verbs. So draw container info. Okay. Uh, let's see here. I'm gonna make sure that this is custom editor. Okay, if it's oh right, the using env png custom editor type of container torch okay i was planning to program quite a bit but then i discovered i only watched a tv series until it's mid-season finally so instead of programming i watched part of a tv series oh it's mid-season finale okay what tv show are you watching what could possibly be so good that you have to continue to watch it All right, uh, so for this, we're gonna say, uh, if, oops, I'm gonna need to do that too, won't I? So we're gonna need to say, using sleepyowl.common. So if custom, hmm? What? Custom. the heck what do you mean it doesn't exist oh right ah freaking always gets me I did that so that I could separate my editor scripts from my common scripts and now it's it's confusing me About draw a header uh, we'll give it an ID of like three eh, you know what Oh, no, I lied. It's probably actually going to have to be more than that. So we'll, we'll just say like five. Uh, new GUI content. Doo, 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 doo. Okay, all that fun stuff. Editor GUI layout dot begin vertical. It's going to be editor styles dot text area. Lucifer. I've heard Lucifer is pretty good. I've had it recommended to me, but I'm, I don't know. I mean, it seems it doesn't seem like a bad show. It just isn't something that I have taken the time to watch. I guess, um, especially now, I, I've had a lot of a lot of new TV coming out in the past week and the next couple of weeks that I wanted to watch. Um, I watched Defenders last weekend, and that was 
a TV show produced by Netflix. Um, <laughs> it wasn't the worst thing I've ever seen, but it definitely had its had its weak moments. Uh, so there's going to be container info. All right, uh, let's go ahead and close that compile, I guess. Uh, we're going to go ahead and assign these values. Oh, yeah, hold on. Just assign these. Let's look at these briefly before going out. Okay. Uh, so I think, I think that's pretty much everything. Let's, oh, I was going to say, why are you doing that? All right, so let's go ahead and we're gonna remove the torch here. Okay, and I suppose before I go any further, I should pull this back like that. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Why do I have two fields for this? Okay, uh, we're gonna look at that real quick. Grove. Have a duplicate one there for some reason. Oh wait, hold on. Nope, I lied. I just had a duplicate one there for some reason. All right. Well, whatever works. Oops, come on. Go ahead and go back here. Uh, da, 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 da. So I think we're gonna want to say, if you know what, nah, nuts to this. We're gonna do something that I should have done a while ago. So this will require a little bit of a refactor in most of our editor scripts, but it'll make life easier along further along. Um, I think to keep up with Defenders, you need to watch it combined with a series for each character in the correct order. No, I mean, I did that. I watched all of the Marvel series in the order they came out in, um, regardless of how terrible the Iron Fist was, uh, and pretty much how terrible half of Season 2 of Daredevil was. Um, but it's, it's just, eh, they didn't quite manage to make it all come together in a good way for defenders, in my opinion. It, it wasn't the worst thing I've ever seen, but it was, it was kind of just bland and forgettable. There were a couple of moments that were fine, but nothing really that impressive. Um, all right, so we're going to go ahead and get rid of all this Uh, da, 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 da. So we're going to go ahead and save all of our references, character editor, and we'll just wrap all of this, essentially. Um, I guess I'm going to say base index then. That seems weird to me. But I guess that's not too much of a problem. Yeah, I guess I'm just going to call it base index. Base index. Oh, right, I remember why I did that. Because I had to try and balance a lot of these header stuff. Okay, let's do something like that. Alrighty then. So we're going to actually... Yeah, we'll just call it info, I suppose. Okay, so we're going to get rid of this if. Go up here. Mm -hmm. And I suppose I should do that for our verbs as well. So I'm going to get this down, get rid of definition, and we'll do this. Mm -hmm. All right. And we're going to come up here, come back here. All the way up. And we're gonna see where draw info is being used again. Find all references. We're just kind of gonna go down the line. So I'm gonna get rid of you. Shoop. Get rid of you. Shoop. 
I suppose something I should do to make sure that everything looks right is uh, select my torch here. Make sure that this refreshes, because now it should automatically have our header stuff. Ta-da! Hooray! Nice and easy. Let's see. The only actual Marvel series I watch is Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., so I'm going to need to look at the miniseries list. Ah... Uh, See, I, I started watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and I got through, I think, the third season. Um, but after that, it kind of got ridiculous, and I kind of just stopped caring. Um, like, that whole uh, arc with the... What did they even call it? It was it was Hydra, like, the original Hydra's mission to bring this thing back. And it's just like, ah, God, come on, guys. You're, you're not really working well here. Um, so there was, there was a lot of, there was a lot of, ugh, in, uh, or at least I kind of felt from, from, uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. after the third season, which is a shame, because it was pretty good up to that point. Um, let's go ahead and get rid of all of this, and probably can get rid of this. Well, actually, no, I don't need that. So we're going to go ahead and paste that. Hello, Garrett. Welcome back. How goes it? Or, well, how's it going? It's going okay. We're doing a little bit of editor scripting uh, to clean things up. And then we're trying to get a torch and a container to be the same thing. So that's that's what's on the menu for tonight. Basically refactoring the container system so that it can be a little bit more um, flexible. How are you today, Garrett? <laughs> uh, fourth season is better. It has Ghost Rider. I heard that Ghost Rider was, coming back, was in there. But... Oh, eh, eh. It also doesn't seem like they have the budget to pull off something like Ghost Rider. So I, I don't know. It's really hard for me to, to say. I, I've kind of... I feel like Marvel is in a rut at this point, and they're not really doing anything particularly interesting. Okay. Let's go ahead and copy that. Paste it in here. <laughs> Container inspector. Go ahead and paste this in. Door inspector. Keep pasting these guys in here. So, no actual object inspector. That's all good. Item inspector. Currently, what we're doing um, for those who just turned in, tuned in, um, I'm basically replacing a lot of my editor scripts so they don't have to have these if statements in front of a bunch of draw informations or draw information calls, um, so that I can shorten my uh, scripting size scripting length for these editors, and so I don't have to constantly type these if statements. That's the main reason. I really don't like doing that. Okay, paste that in here. Okay, that's good. And there we are. So, doing well. Finish the latest round of work on for pay. Happy like game. I'm back where you know. Yeah, I saw the post you, you made on Twitter. Uh, was, I think it was uh, one of the Friday screenshot things that Unity does. It looked pretty good. Um, were you working on that at the same time as your uh, your next game, or were you kind of putting your next game on hold while you worked on Frappe? Uh, let's see here. So we're going to go to copy this, paste that in, and now we're going to do all the fun stuff with drawbird. Inspector, draw verbs. Container inspector, draw verbs. Fifty. Nope, it's one hundred and ten. That works too. Item inspector. Herbs. Lantern, map item. Mm -hmm. We're good, and we're good. All right, just one more thing to do. And I swear we're done. And that is this. So 
we're going to space this out. All right, so now I no longer need to have a bunch of if statements in my on inspector GUI. I don't know what past Chris was thinking. Probably something stupid. That's always how these things are. Um, switching back and forth as Starlight gets me art. Originally took on that Frappe project because I was kind of stuck on the design of my main game and the abstraction. I had a better idea where I wanted to go, so I'm back. That makes sense. It's it's it actually can be weirdly refreshing to just. Uh, not have to worry about the project that you're, or your main project, which is why game jams are actually really, really fun. Um, let's see, combat equip point. I'm getting rid of the excess con GUI content stuff too. Because I don't need most of these. But past Chris didn't know any better because he was a fool. Yes, 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 I know, I know. It's all fine and good, I think. Get rid of this and get rid of this. All right. So, probably have to keep that like that, I'm guessing. Uh, all right. So I'm going to see where draw item info is being used. I'm going to do the same thing. So find all references. This one will be a lot shorter. Boop. And boop. there we go. All right. I think we're good on the inspectors. I can probably close them all now. Inspector object, clothing inspector, uh, container inspector. Climbable inspector or the character editor. Okay, set all that compile and take a drink. <laughs> well, that's true. the The current Chris is 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 much smarter and you know far more clever and much more handsome than past Chris. But past Chris is always an idiot, so you know. There are very few, very, very few occasions where past Chris manages to impress current Chris. All right, so let's go ahead uh, and just to make sure everything looks nice. I forget something. Uh, okay. So I guess I can do that then. That's not too bad. Draw a script field. I guess not. All right, that's fine. I like to make sure that I have my script field here just so that I can double click on it to open it up easily. Uh, let's see here. Container info, which doesn't have anything in it for now. Verbs, we don't have to worry about that. I think I could, in theory, update this and everything should be roughly correct. So all the verbs and stuff. Yep. All right. So next we have to do container information. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna come up here. We'll grab our turn off menu controls, probably turn off interaction as well. Uh, and we're gonna come over here and I'm gonna do copy these. So, all right, so we're gonna turn these into serialized properties. So private, all private, and serialized property. All right, and let's go ahead and set an underscore, underscore, and underscore L, oops, underscore I, say and underscore max capacity is equal to serialized object dot find property mm -hmm. and we'll just paste that in there oops not that though paste that in okay so let's copy 
One, two, three, four, five. Mm. Yeah, as far as I guess this is this is kind of busy work, so I'll try to talk and multitask, even though I'm terrible at that. <laughs> Max capacity. I have that in there twice? That doesn't seem right. Oh. No, that doesn't. What did I do? What did I do? I must have pasted by accident. That's fine. M underscore I. There we go. Let's go ahead and I, D, I, L, S. All right. So now we have to just draw all uh, draw all of our serialized properties. Ah. Anyway, uh, so while this is going on, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of any good TV that's coming out soon, because it's the fall season, which is, you know, when everyone likes to do all of their fancy TV shows. Um, so, Netflix has Defenders, which is meh. Um, has Little Witch Academia's second half of the first season, I think, and that's pretty good. Uh, duh. What else is there? Uh, Netflix is about to release the Death Note movie, which I will watch only because Willem Dafoe is playing Ryuk which is an amazing casting choice. Um, even though I'm pretty sure that the entire movie itself will probably be a stinking pile of garbage. But, you know, that's just because I think most movies are stinking piles of garbage. So, and, uh, ID. There we are. so now our editor should be correct. So this should actually populate itself. Um, yeah, but aside from that, I can't really think of any good TV shows. I guess Rick and Morty is currently doing its third season, um, and that's pretty good. Uh, anything else? Oh, uh, actually, The Tick. The Tick on Amazon is about to start. Um, and for those of you who don't know what The Tick is, uh, The Tick is a... Well, Amazon got the rights to a show called The Tick, uh, which was... In the past, a couple of shows, it, were, it was originally a comic book, then a cartoon in the 90s, and it was supposed to be like a sort of parody of modern superheroes. And then in the early 2000s, I think, it got a live-action series with Patrick Warburton as the Tick. And my god, he is, he is amazing in that show. You should, you should go watch it just for him. It's only like 10 episodes, too, so it's you know one of those shows that was tragically canceled before its time. Um, but that's going to be a thing. Oh, right. Hold on. Gotta make sure that are set to be true and here we are true. so this true here will tell it that it needs to draw arrays if you don't if you have an array and you don't specify that it needs to draw children then it won't it'll just be these little fold outs that you can only partially see um hmm. but yeah the the amazon uh or the amazon tick is going to start airing, I think, on the 25th, something like that. So that will probably be something that's interesting, if nothing else. The pilot was okay. It had some funny moments. Um, okay, so now we have to actually get the JSON parsing working for our, uh, for our container torch. So I now have to come down all the way here, 200 lines. 200 lines of code before I even start scripting anything new. Ugh. There has to be a better way than that. That just kills me so much. Uh, Alright, so override from JSON. So this is... Yeah, that's fine. I'm pretty sure that this is actually going to call base. Wait, hmm? Did the torch really not have anything? Oh, right. Uh, the torch doesn't have its set up yet. <sighs> rumph, rumph, rumph. Okay, so we're going to have to do all that. Let's go ahead and pull that stuff up, actually. Request. <laughs> and design. Interactions. And interactive object.
See, you say that 200 lines is nothing, but you have to remember that that 200 lines is not me scripting anything. That is literally me just pulling functionality from one class to another. Uh, it's not new code. It's just existing code. 200 lines to start. And that just... Ugh, that's so sloppy. There has, I, I, there has to be a better way than copying 200 lines of text or of code just to get base functionality. Um, I hate doing duplicate code like that. It drives me nuts. Um, all right. So let's see. Do I have one for Torch? I do not. So I'm going to actually add one. Uh, this is probably fine. Container might be better. Eh, this is probably fine. All right, so we're going to duplicate this, and I'm going to call it Torch. All right. So Torch is going to need what exactly? It's going to need a lit ID, can light, can't light message, and that's it. So I need three fields. columns so lit id can light and can't light message all right so <laughs> this is going to be i assume true for most cases and what did i want to do for the default the life we are. Paste that in. Uh, I suppose we'll also go ahead and resize this to be, I don't know, 400 lines long. Probably could get away with a slightly larger one, maybe 500. And we'll also make sure that this wraps. Like that. Alright, uh, so now I can duplicate this and make a... Well... Hmm. Let me think. I think I can duplicate this. So we're going to say duplicate. Oh, no, 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 not duplicate, sorry. Delete. I want to copy to. There we are. I've got quite a bit of duplicate code in my vector class just to reduce function calls, but probably just going to make it. Yeah, it's, I just I just have a huge pet peeve about duplicating code, um, so I try to isolate it whenever I can or derive from it and just do that. But I can't really do that with the interface, so just kind of got to deal with it. Uh, let's see, interactive object template. I believe we want. Fine, we're gonna navigate. So where what the heck? It's it's gone. There it is. Text quest design interactions overworld uh, heroes grove and okay, I guess just torch. Input target workbook. Torch. <laughs> and there we go. Uh, so let's go ahead and say Torch 1 lit, I believe. It's actually probably Torch 2 lit, and that's fine. So we're going to call this Torch Valor. Torch 1 lit. Uh, I can't true on all of that, so I think we're fine. Okay. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and go back to interactions. And I'm going to go ahead and make a duplicate of this. Make a copy. One useless if won't slow it down. 
probably faster than a function call and the functions are inline if we have templated or uh, we have templates. Yeah, I mean that's true. It's just I, I wish I didn't I mean maybe I can come up with some sort of function for that as a convenience call. Like a container utility, maybe? I don't know. It's probably something that would work. Uh, here is Grove. Alright. Uh, so we're going to call that Torch Valor. I think everything's fine there. Um, but... For this one, we're going to call this Torch Courage. Torch Courage. All right. And we are going to have, I guess, a lot of duplicate stuff here, but for now, I'm just going to copy and paste. Boop. And I need the container and I need the torch. Uh, let's go ahead and. Oh, uh, hold on. Torch. Torch one lit. Uh, Valor is actually the one on the right. So that's Two there. Let's go ahead and copy this over. I spelled it torch. <laughs> I spelled it the perch. There we go. I make this torch one lit. Mm -hmm. Just found a huge error in my vectors. Push back if the capacity is too small. It does resize it because I don't update the capacity to allocate. You're saying it doesn't resize it, or it does? Because I would, I would assume that a resizing vector would actually be more convenient. Because you'd have automatic allocation. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of... It's not climbable. Nope, not rename. Come on. Uh, delete. It's not a door. It's not a switch or any of these things. I wish I could, like, bulk delete. That would be quite nice care about any of the switches that I have. Well, I mean, I care about my switch, but not this switch. Uh, it's not an item. It's not a map. It's not a weapon. Okay. I think we're good. So, let's see. Uh, I'm going to have to get the verbs from here. Shoop. Let's copy this. And paste this one. Which looks like it is very old. All right. Paste this in, and we should be good now. So we're going to come out here to container data ID. We're probably going to have to update those. I'm guessing. Let's go to design collection items data IDs, and while we're at it, we'll pull up our item IDs. All right, we're gonna go to Grove, Torch One Lit, Legend One Red. Uh, we don't really care about that. Sword taken, sword unlocked. Um, let's go ahead, we're gonna have, oh, it doesn't allocate, or resize, okay. Uh, so we're gonna need a data ID for our torch, so we're gonna have just well, what do I call the castle? Chest contents. There we are. So I suppose we'll call this um, Grove Torch Contents. That seems fine. Seems twenty. Okay, uh, are there any other ones that I would need? Let's go over here to Grove. Sword, Lock Sword. I uh, don't think I need anything there. And I am going to grab this, which is going to be. Uh, what do I want to call it? Um, log? <laughs> I guess. I guess it's just going to be called Log. I don't know what else to call it. Uh, 47, that's fine. Uh, we're going to go back to data IDs here. I'm going to do underscores. I need to have consistency, so I'm going to start doing underscores on everything. Nope. 
this. All right. Uh, so I think our item IDs and our data IDs are basically up to date. Um, we will probably need to have a action. I'm going to duplicate this. I need to have a, a log that I can put into the uh, oops, into our torch. So those rove. All right. Oh, and actually, this is not going to go in the Heroes Grove. This should go into the log. Should go into the cabin, actually. So we're just going to call this log. Um, which is logs, plural. And I'm actually going to do a couple of things. Uh, one, we're going to move this into Overworld. Move this into cabin. This is going to go into items. All right, and then we are also going to, what is it that I needed to grab? Uh, dictionary, that's what it was. I need to check my dictionary. I'm pretty sure that I have log in there already, but just in case, you can do it. Uh, let's see, L-O, nope, I do not. Oh, good, so we have to add that. So log, noun. False, or not false, because I can't spell. So one below, logs, noun. It is a plural form, and it does not need to be hidden. All right, let's go ahead and open this up. Uh, let's see, we do want to grab all sheets. Uh, we want to replace existing files. Uh, let's see, ignore, nope, nope, nope. Uh, we want to, for string values, export. I don't think I want to export cell arrays. Um, I do want to export sheet arrays. Oh no, I lied, I do need to do export cell arrays. And do I need to do values? Oops. No, I don't think I do. So, all right, uh, last thing is that fun stuff, and you're good. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, I think this is the first time I've exported from my dictionary since I updated my JSON exporter, um, or my JSON XML exporter, because um, now you no longer need to save, or you, know, you no longer need to re-enter all of your export credentials. It'll just populate it automatically. All right, so let's go ahead and download that. So we got a couple of things that we're going to uh, data IDs, I believe I download as a CSV. So download as a CSV for the Grove. Then item IDs, I believe, are actually exported as a JSON file. Um, oh, that's convenient. So all that stuff's fine. Hooray! Really? Well, that seems right, so okay then. Um, I guess out of paranoia, I'm going to check that. All right, so yep, all right. And we can just go ahead and export, oops, not the data IDs, item IDs, just export there. <laughs> so many text files in so many different formats. <laughs> Download this stuff. Well, Jomega is definitely doing more advanced stuff than I'm doing because he's he's working on his own engine, um, so he's doing some really low level stuff. Uh, and by low level, I don't mean like easy. I mean low level is in closer to the hardware. Uh, and that's some that's a level that I try not to venture into too much. <laughs> it can be quite. Uh, chaotic, I feel. All right, uh, let's go ahead and go to export sheet data. Oh, man, remembers everything. I, don't, I didn't think I've exported from here before that, but I guess I have. Um, I don't remember 
my knee hurt. Shit. Mm, that's probably fine. All right. Um, then we'll go ahead and export this. Okay, uh, Torch Courage. So let's grab our data ID. Go to Torch Contents. That's our data ID. Capacity is going to actually be one. Initial items will be nothing. Uh, list contents, yes? Question mark. Always open, ah, fully. Um, I don't really need those. Uh, that's not great. Let's delete these columns. That probably means that I need to have a separate thing for containers. Man, gross. That's fine. Uh, low level programming is harder, but I also find it more rewarding, especially with custom command RB faster. C plus plus. American train. Or, oh yeah. Uh, still need to test the speed. But first, I'm making sure all functionality works. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the thing is when you're coding at that low of a level, um, you you will get way better performance. But it also is far easier to mess up and just fork everything. Um, so we don't want any initial items. So I think we're good here. Let's go ahead and go to export sheet data. We want to export all sheets. I might as well replace existing files, even though it's not going to do anything. Uh, unwrap single row, don't care about ignoring empty cells, don't want to force string values, export cell arrays, export sheet arrays, and yes, that should be it. So let's go ahead and export that. <laughs> let's open up Torch Valor. We got all of our item IDs. We're almost done pulling in all of our JSON. Okay. Let's go ahead and close these. And now we can start importing all of that crap. Uh, so let's go ahead and come up here. Oops. Show this. Actually, you know what? Mm. Let's go to data, interactions, interaction data, overworld, cabin, items. Yep, shows you how old this is. The older, the farther back we go in time, the more likely it is we'll, we'll see this three or four CSV files. Uh, because originally, my, my original workflow was I had four separate CSVs, uh, one for each spreadsheet tab, and I had to download them all separately, and it was a nightmare. And now I no longer have to do that, because I am free. <laughs> and because of the add-on that I wrote. So, it's kind of that, that's why I wrote it, actually, was because I, I wanted to avoid these things. Uh, Alright, so let's go ahead and... Where are you? Go to... Oh, right, my log. Log, log, log. Still got to do this. So, description, um, a piece of wood? Or, well, mm, no. Uh, a log from a fireplace. Do I want to say it should burn nicely? See, we also have another problem here now, is what should happen when people light the log on fire? Should it just burn for an eternity? Because in theory, I could see what people, or people might want to do something like drop the log, then light it on fire. Because then I, I can't really tell it not there to like destroy itself. It shouldn't do that. It probably should burn forever because it's an important item. Um crud I don't know what to do with that then uh, should run quite nicely I don't know why these don't ever wrap uh, brown should be its color pretty sure that I have a brown um, I'm gonna say wooden I'm not gonna ignore any groups uh, do 
I have wood? I am like 90% sure that I have wood. Because I have wooden. Yeah. No, no, that's words. Wood. Ah, fooey. Wood is not an adjective. Or, it's not a noun. Uh, probably should be. Okay. Which means that I need to actually get rid of my dictionary stuff here. Because we got to replace it. Oop. No, not wood. Adjective. Noun. Adjective. There we go. Uh, data IDs. Okay, so let's go ahead and export all that stuff again. And go back to our log. I guess I'll have this say wood. Plural names. There's Wood is the plural of wood. <laughs> so, uh, okay. It's not a container. We can delete a bunch of stuff. Basically delete everything except the item and the verbs. Uh, delete. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, unit test stuff is not something that I really enjoy doing. In fact, I still don't really know an adequate way of integrating unit tests into Unity's workflow. Um, that's something that I wanted to, to do for a long time. Hep that would be really helpful for my, for my parser, actually. But it's, it's so weird to do unit tests sometimes for Unity. Uh, especially when you have code that's not single fire executable, like things that have to happen over time. Unit tests are very, very difficult to use in those cases. Um, all right, so it is going to be just log, I believe, is the item file. Yep, just log right there. Uh, let's see, the type is going to be default, I believe. Equip type is none. It's not a, it's not a light. Does it? Yeah, weight of one is fine. None. But I guess hand. Not that it matters. I uh, don't need to worry about any of you. And verbs. All right. Uh, so I'm going to do text only for a lot of this stuff. Uh, add to inventory and drop. That's all fine. I'm just going to do default fails, I think, for most of this. Not too worried about this. Direct redirects from text, all this stuff is fine. Uh, required, here we go. So this is going to be lantern. Verb is going to be light. Output is going to be default. That ID is going to be... Ah, crud. Ah, crud. Um, okay. Ugh, we might end up making this a special type of item, like a burnable item or something. Um, hello, Screen Motion. Welcome to the dev stream. Refactoring is indeed like that, which is kind of what we're doing right now, although we're doing a lot more data manipulation currently. I uh, require equipped will be true, and always require will be true, I suppose. Uh, data ID. That's that's actually something that's interesting. Um, so we actually have some problems here. Uh, so I was mentioning how uh, it, it wouldn't be unexpected if players were to get this log that you're supposed to put into the torch to light it on fire. Um, it would not be unexpected for people to just get the log, drop it, and then light it on fire, no matter where they are. Um, which means that I actually need to keep track of the lit status of the log. Um, so... This is... This is interesting. Um, I don't think I'm going to worry about it right now. But it is something that we're going to probably do, if not tonight, then on Thursday. Um, because we're going to essentially have to have, I think, a special, a special subtype of item that... Um, basically just says, okay, am I supposed to be able to be burned? And if so, am I going to burn forever or am I going to burn then go away? Uh, and if I burn forever, I need to store that data. And when you come back to this level, I need to relight myself on fire. Uh, so I think this is probably fine. 
fine. Uh, let me just finish filling out the verb stuff, I guess. So extinguish can be default. I uh, don't need to read examine. We'll just say, or how about just a simple piece of wood. Uh, hit. I don't know what to, to do with that, so I'm just going to say. <laughs> Oh, I'm trying to think of a pun you can say with wood. Uh, anyone have any good puns that they can think of with wood? I mean, that I guess that would be under the insult. So I'm just going to say, uh, yeah, we'll do our, our default, take that. It's usually what I do when I can't think of something for now. Uh, and we'll say, you tell the object's name, it looks a little wooden. All right. Uh, that's probably a good enough set. To do for now, so let's go ahead and export this stuff. All right, uh, replace existing files, unwrap single row sheets, export cell arrays, sheet arrays, and that's good to go, I think. All right, so now we should have everything, and I should be able to download it, and then we should be able to actually pull everything in. Let's try that. All right, let's go to downloads. So we have our dictionary. That's not going to go there, though. MIDs log is going to go here. And I can delete log. Oh, by the way, screen motion, since you're new, how'd you come across the stream? I have not had, I've not asked that question in a long time. I keep forgetting to ask people that. Now, uh, let's see here. Torch, Valor, and Courage, that probably needs to be updated as well. So let's go ahead and go to Heroes Grove, then we'll just pull them in there. Demos, pull these guys in. Right there, and then delete them. Okay, I think all we have left is item IDs and dictionary. Oh, and our data IDs for that stuff. So uh, we're going to need <laughs> item IDs. Or download, drag that in, place file and destination. I know all the file replacing is super exciting, but once we have it working, it should actually be somewhat interesting. Uh, dictionary, pull this in, view, and next is data IDs. Overworld, Grove, file, and uh, cabin, progression, oh, that's not something I downloaded, but okay, um, I don't need one for cabin yet, I don't need one for progression either, so I think we're good, I think that's all of them, uh, log, dictionary, torch, torch, item ID, data IDs, yes, we're good. Uh, all right. Well, I'll see you later, Jelmega. Hopefully, you'll be able to refactor the vector code for your engine and make everything all super optimized. But I wish you luck in that regard. Uh, it's three in the morning. Not working tomorrow. I was looking for some bank code to watch. <laughs> well. There's definitely code to watch. I don't know if I would technically say it meets the qualifications for Dank, but it might be close. 50, 60 percent-ish. Um, in any case, let's go ahead and refresh. So now we have log. And we're going to do a couple of other things. So screen motion, do you, are you a game developer in your spare time or full time, I guess? Either one would work. Or do you just code for fun or code things other than games, I suppose? I hope, I forget that there are other things that run on computer code that are not games. Um, all right, uh, data, 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 just IDs, overworld, grove, all right. Let's go ahead and refresh. So now we have grove torch contents and dictionary. Need to update that too. 
fun stuff. Update. We have added several words. Okay. All right. Not that told me how many words exactly. I was just too lazy to count. All right. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> That's all of our data IDs. Next, we need to just get the actual objects themselves populated. So, all right, now we can test, well, almost. Now we need to actually uh, set up our torch to parse information out specific to it, and then set up our container torch to parse container information. So let's go from torch inspector down to, it's just base torch, which I, for some reason, I'm not actually editing. So let's go to definition, pull this over, or pull this over. There we go. Scroll all the way down to the bottom. And we're going to say override from JSON. Okay. Let's see here. Now we're going to need to say <laughs> this dot lit ID is equal to uh, it's not collection. Sure dot get uh, find data ID based on name, I believe. So JSON dot get string value. And then I'm going to do nothing there because I'm not actually, uh, that's not actually what I want to parse. Instead, I want to say JSON object. Um, da, 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 torch. I'm going to say lantern torch info is equal to JSON dot get object, and then it's going to be a constant that I need to do. So I'm going to say uh, interactive object utility dot, I'm going to say verb, Oops. verb info, is that the right one? Yes, no, 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 no. Oh, come on. Uh, we'll just look for name, I guess. That's fine. I don't really care. I just needed to get this so I could easily jump over to it. Uh, love code, study code, live with code, live for code, I guess. That's fair. Uh, all right. So we have container. Next is going to be torch. Torch. Public const string. Uh, what's, I guess, what's some of the stuff that you're coding currently? If you can talk about it, or want to talk about it. I usually like to ask people on the stream what they do. Uh, let's see, so there's going to be torch lit ID, lit underscore ID, public const string torch underscore, what are they that I need? Uh -huh. Can light and can't light. Okay. Can light can underscore light and public const string torch uh, can't light that's equal to can't light Oops. message all right now we can go back here to torch all the way back down here and we're gonna say torch lit ID Oh, crud. Nope, nope, no, 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 no. That's not actually what I needed. Uh, da, 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 da. Ah, here we are. Public const string info underscore torch. Torch. Info underscore torch. All right, now we can actually do what's expected. So interactive object utility dot torch lit ID. Okay. <laughs> so then we're going to say uh, can light is equal to my collection manager. Uh, let's see. Torch info dot get bool value. And we're going to say interactive object utility dot torch underscore and I also need to make sure that I'm looking 
through my torch info, not, not JSON. And then finally, we're going to say uh, can't light message is equal to torch info dot get string value interactive object utility dot torch can't light. All right, so that should work for our basic from JSON, and we can test that with our uh, torch valor, I suppose. Assuming I could actually move. There we go. I'm going to get rid of you. Start torch Valor. Where is. There we are. This is Valor. I'll go ahead and paste that in. Let's clear all this information and then we're going to clear our console and hit update. There we go. No errors. Everything seems to work. We got our torch two lit, the light briefly flickers before going out. All that stuff seems to be correct. So hooray, I think that works. Let's see, at school I'm using C++ for some months now. Totally hyped, great language. At work it's more about JavaScript and stuff. Interesting, but nah, you know. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of JavaScript myself. Um, so why are you doing that? Is that on your spare time? Totally dedicated to it. I, I'm doing it because I, I mean, I'm, Developer. Uh, uh, this is only being done in my spare time because I have a full, full time, eight hour a day job um, that you know pays the bills, and then I come home after that, and I work on this because this is the game that I really want to work on, um, and I will finish it. I don't care how long it takes me, I will do it. <laughs> All right. Uh, so this this should work. So all the torch parsing works. Now we need to set up container parsing for our container torch. Uh, so we'll go all the way down to the bottom here, and uh, okay. So we're gonna say, <laughs> what are the things we need to do? So we're gonna say, max capacity is equal to. We're just gonna say zero for now because I actually need to do something. It's equal. There we go. I'm gonna say JSON object uh, container JSON is equal to JSON dot get object. Uh, index just get object and then interactive object utility dot info underscore heaps underscore container okay there we go uh, <laughs> all right so now we're going to say container json dot get int value and interactive object utility dot container underscore Container underscore capacity. All right. But yeah. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. <laughs> Let's see, what are my other things? Specific items and list contents. Specific items. That is going to be. You know what, I'm also going to be lazy and I'm just going to copy these. Oop. Maybe I'm just going to block code them down here. I don't know, it keeps going all the way up. There we go. All right, uh, so we're going to say <laughs> JSON, oops. JSON array, uh, specific items array. Container JSON dot get array uh, interactive object utility dot container not initial items uh, am I really do I not that doesn't seem right uh, hold on. Um, <laughs> great to see someone act really in personal projects instead of some lines and some files thrown away after some days. Yeah, well, I mean, I've definitely been working on this longer than some days. I'm entering year four, I think now. Pretty much, yep. Uh, I think uh, in September, this will be four years. 
a long time. And it has come a long way. So I'm going to go to container here. And I think it's from JSON. I don't know if I'm actually doing anything with uh, specific items currently. I'm not. Huh. Well, so that's functionality that I've coded or I've planned for, but I never implemented. <sighs> Way to go, past Chris. Well, that's fine. For now, I'm not going to worry about it um, in container, but I do need to worry about it in container torch. So, yay! That's not too bad, though. I know how to do it. Um, so we're just going to say uh, specific instance item ID is correct. Yes, good. So we're going to say for int i equals zero, i is less than specific item array dot length i plus plus. And we're just going to say specific items dot add. Well, actually, no, I lied. We won't, we won't quite do that. Instead, we're going to say that ID, no, 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 sorry, item ID, item ID is equal to Collection manager dot find item ID dot oh sorry specific items array dot get objects no get string at index of i I think that's what I want why are you squiggly Oh, come on. Seriously? There it is. Get string value index. Uh, and we're going to say if item ID does not equal... Come on. Lowercase i. <laughs> does not equal data ID. No, no, no. Item ID dot none. All right. Uh, and then we're going to say specific items dot add item ID. Okay. There we go. All of that effort. Just to do that. Um, we're going to have to do that twice, actually, because I basically have to do the exact same thing for initial items. Uh, yep, four years has been a long time. Although, to be fair, uh, keep in mind, well, I guess you wouldn't know this, but um, about two years ago, I scrapped a lot of my, well, not a lot, all of my art and redid it. So, the code is, is four years old, although a lot of the really early code at this point has been rewritten as well. Um, and all of the art was scrapped and redone about two years ago. So it's it's like a weird half four years thing. Um, so how do you manage changes over years in terms of coding style, graphics, expectations? Uh, I redo it, honestly. That is, that is exactly what I do. Um, so... To show you an example real quick, we'll let this, I guess, we'll save this and we'll let it compile. Um, so these these torches that you see here are actually some of the first models that I made for the game, which is why they're terrible, and I'm going to redo them soon. Um, and if I could move around, there we go, I could show you more of them. So you can see that like the lettering is stretched to the left. There's a lot of white space here that's not really that great. Um, there are just problems kind of all around with this model. Um, it's not it's not very well designed. I mean, it looks fine, but it's not. There are a lot of problems. Um, I have an entire face, I believe, on the bottom here that's useless because you'll never actually see it. I'm just wasting space there and wasting my light maps. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff like this. This is, this is one of the earliest models I did, so it looks hideous. Um, the substance on top of it is kind of newish, but it's only new in the sense that I just took the original texture and updated it. I didn't actually change it or do anything to make it nice. Um, so that's going to be part of the redesign. Uh, and probably the best example of that would be, or of the changes aesthetically and you know, art-wise that I've done, although I'll talk about code in a second here, is uh, so legend... So this, this is the original legend that uh, you're supposed to read here in this area. And you can see that it's, it's literally just a cube. Um, and the texture for that is, let me see if I can find it. Um, I guess it's here. So the material for it was originally just a straight up 512 by 512 PNG file. 
um, like no normal map, no roughness metallic maps, or anything like that. It was just a single PNG albedo texture. And the new ones, as you can see, are much more complex. They look much better. Um, they have, although it's a little hard to see there, so I guess I'll bump over here. They have normal maps on them, so you can see stuff like stone imperfections and uh, veins on the ivy. Um, and in general, they just look a lot more interesting. So that's that's one of the examples of how a lot of things have changed. It's just, it's not huge changes in terms of what it looks like, really, although I guess these look nothing alike, really. Um, but it's more about learning how to present things very well and learning how to do a lot of a lot of a lot better uh, art workflows um, because now everything's a fancy substance and has really really nice normal maps and uh, very very soft noise and uh, just a lot better in my opinion. Um, and then code wise, I was an idiot in the past and honestly. You're a programmer, you know what it's like looking at old code. You go back and you're like, ah, this is horrendous. I should just redo this. And that's usually what I end up doing. It's just redoing um, redoing a lot of my old work because my old work was really, really bad. So, so yeah, there's definitely a lot of stuff that I've learned about over the years. Because um, when I first started working on this project, I was, a, I was a novice programmer. And now I am much better. Much, 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 much better. I'm at least an intermediate. Um, I don't know if I could claim expertise. I, I mean, I could, but I feel like that would be arrogant because there's actually a lot of stuff program in programming that I don't really know how to do yet. Um, I mean, compared to where I was, certainly I'm an expert, but compared to a lot of other people, I know I don't know if I can make that claim. So, oh yeah, and if you, I'm thinking about uh, doing Sunday art streams. I don't know if people would be interested in that, where it's just sort of like music and me doing a bunch of art. But if, if you ever watch one of my art streams, like I go insane sometimes with the detail that I try to pack into stuff. Actually, I'm going to gush about this a little bit because I just redesigned these textures. Um, so I think it was, it was last week we redid the textures for uh, these reliefs that you see here, um, which messed up a bunch of the UVs for them because I had actually moved stuff around. Um, and when I did that, I came across some nice level design opportunities in the sense that uh, originally the the ivy that you see growing here was growing, let me see, where was it? It was growing here uh, and here. And both of those are actually really terrible places because there's no sunlight there. So one of the things that I did when I was redesigning this was I made it make sense where the ivy grows. So now you can see the ivy only grows in spots where there's actual sunlight. So it grows here along the edge, it grows up above, uh, grows here on the edge, uh, which is still in sunlight. Uh, and then one of the nice little touches that I personally like, and I doubt anyone will ever notice, so just, sorry, I want to gush about this, but um, the only legend with ivy on it is the legend that is always going to have light on it in some level. So you can see that the ivy sort of crawls along the uh, sunlight. It's not perfectly matched up to it, mind you, and that was, uh, I was chalking that up to... Um, the sun drifting overhead as time passes. But yeah, so small stuff like that. And that is something that very few people will ever really look at or care about, but it's it's some of the stuff that I try to do whenever I'm designing these textures. So in any case, sorry, back to code. Um, so let's go ahead and finish this up. Uh, we need to get our other things working. So we got specific items in there now. Uh, so we're going to say list contents is equal to uh, container JSON dot get bool value enter bool object utility dot uh, container underscore list contents. There we go. Oh, right. Um, I need to add that stuff, don't I? Let's go down to here too. Oh, data ID, initial items, I guess we'll call this public const string container underscore uh, specific underscore items is equal to specific items. And let's double check that list. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Oh, holy crap. Seriously? Ah! Sorry for people who were listening in headphones. I don't actually even have a field for specific items. I hate my, hate my 
past self sometimes. All right, uh, let's go ahead and fix that then. So initial items, we're gonna go ahead and create one to the right. This is in our template, so it's not gonna affect existing ones, but that's fine. I'm gonna call this specific items. All right, uh, let's go over to Torch Courage. items and that's going to have just log <clears throat> although I guess it's gonna be kind of weird if you can't put stuff on top of it but yay it's fine um, let's go ahead and export that again uh, grab some of this stuff interactions interaction data overworld heroes Grove download torch courage again <laughs> well, thank you very much for stopping by, Scream Ocean. Uh, always fun to, to talk with new people. Hopefully what I was doing was at least somewhat interesting, although admittedly I guess you didn't get to see much because uh, I'm doing a lot of editor scripting right now. But but hopefully you'll come back and, and watch some uh, some future stuff because sometimes we get some pretty cool, or cool programming done. Go ahead and do show and extract this over. But yeah. Good luck on your programming, uh, or on your personal programming, I suppose, because no one really cares about work programming, <laughs> unless your work programming is your passion programming, but from the sound of it, I would say that's probably not the case, so. But either way, thanks for stopping by. All right, let's go ahead and update this stuff. I'm assuming that was you, so thank you very much for subs or not subscribing, following. I always forget that those are two different things on Twitch. All right, uh, let's go back to our container torch. And we're gonna say da, 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 container initial item. So container underscore, oh no, not that. Container underscore specific items. There we are, specific items. And let's see, we got our list contents. Next we're gonna say Correct item message is equal to container JSON dot get string value interact logic utility dot <laughs> which one was it container underscore uh, incorrect are you serious oh right it's called bad item isn't it <laughs> hey all the terrible names I came we're gonna say data ID is equal to container JSON dot get string. Oh, sorry, did that wrong. Uh, this should actually be uh, collection manager dot find uh, data ID and then container JSON. Oh, come on, JSON dot Get object, no, no, not get object. Get string value. Interact with object utility dot container underscore data ID. Oi. All the fun stuff. And only one more, fortunately. So we're pretty much going to just duplicate this. And then I'm just going to change some of the stuff. So this will say initial items container underscore initial items. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And oops, initial item slab. Okay, there we go. Uh, and while we are at it, I guess we will say override reset object, base dot reset object, and say lit ID is equal to data ID dot none. Then can't add message is equal to nothing. Okay. Then we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna say override reset object. And let's see, we're gonna say 
specific items clear. Initial items not clear. Uh, data ID. Data ID dot none. Oops, come on. You can do it. Data ID dot none. There we go. And let's see. Uh, we don't really care about much else. I suppose I can do incorrect item message. Good for nothing. All right. So now we should be good to actually test this. Um, did I put the courage one in the valor in the valor torch? No. Okay. Good. All right. Uh, let's let's try this. Uh, let's see. All that stuff seems to be correct. Grove torch contents, initial items, specific items, log. Okay. All right. Um, might be a good place to call it tonight. Um, just because I think I'm going to need to, I, I need to think about how I want to do burnable items. Um, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to either have it be an interface similar to what we're doing with um, iContainer, um, or maybe it'll be a type of item. Maybe. Um, I, I don't know what would be the best case there. So um, whatever ends up taking up less space in our spreadsheet will probably be the thing I, I end up going with. Um, but I'm not sure if it makes sense to have like a field in item or perma burn or something like that. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna have to think about that. Um, but we made we made some decent progress, and I knew that it was gonna be a pretty nasty time just because we were gonna refactor the, the container stuff. Um, but fortunately, it does seem like that's working fairly well. Um, it's not doing. I mean, uh, the existing container stuff still functions, and that was the main focus for tonight, I suppose. Um, but in the future, now we'll actually have access to some extra container functionality that won't be too bad to break out, hopefully. So, so that's probably a good place to stop for the night. Um, any announcements? None off the top of my head. So, um, we should be back on Thursday night at a regular time, 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and we'll probably be finishing this stuff up. Uh, I'm pretty confident that we'll be able to get through it pretty quickly once we actually start working on the uh, the implementation. Um, but we'll see we'll see what I can get done between now and then. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to actually get the the torches remodeled um, because I I think I know what I want them to look like. I did a bunch of research on it yesterday. Um, yesterday was spent doing things that really should not have taken as long as they did, but they did. And it took me all night. Um, so hopefully, hopefully uh, we'll be able to do that on Thursday. <laughs> ah, sorry, Ryan. Just got here. Um, yeah, we we kind of, I, I would have I would have kept going, but I think we we've kind of hit a a point where it'd be better for me to to take a little bit of a break so I can work on some of the more boring stuff. Um, so we come back on Thursday. I think I think we'll uh, be able to have a lot more content to actually uh, keep you entertained when you show up. So. Uh, that's that's pretty much, I think, all I was going to do today. So, as always, I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you all next time.